unified brand carries the power of two very strong erstwhile brands, Vodafone and Idea, into one. We have an extensive reach operating in 487,000 towns and villages, as I mentioned earlier. More importantly, we are covering 95% plus of the districts through our distribution reach, and that provides for a strong platform to reach the customers and to acquire the customers. In terms of digital assets, we have multiple digital assets, we app being the most uh, relevant here, and I'll talk a little more about the app as we go forward. And we have a very strong proposition today where our gross ads share in the market is more than our customer market share, and investments in network coming out of this funding will enable us to improve that and uh, participate in the industry growth, which has not happened in the last few years. Uh, before I get into the industry, uh, let me talk about our strong parentage. We have strong parentage of two promoters, Aditya Birla Group and Vodafone Group. Uh, they have invested significant capital into the company. If I were to take uh, what has happened over the last five years, a total of about 30,000 crores of equity has been invested, out of which 23,000 crores has come from the promoters. And as you would have seen the announcement, the preferential issue of another 2,000 crores has been committed by the promoters, which is, of course, subject to shareholders' approval in the next month. Uh, in addition, Government of India is a large shareholder in the company. Current shareholding is at around 32%. You are all familiar with Aditya Birla Group. It is a global conglomerate, which is having a presence across 40 countries. I believe everybody is familiar with Vodafone India, but uh, many people may not know that Vodafone, as a telecom operator, is the largest pan-European and African telecom company. So now coming to the growth opportunities that exist for the Indian telecom. Uh, I'm not getting into the Indian, India growth story because I think all of you understand the India growth story more than I do. So I'll not talk about that so much. But if we look at the Indian telecom story, it has a large, the country has a large and a growing population and ARPU as we can see from this table, is one of the lowest in the world. If we look at a comparable economy like China, uh, China is at $6.64 and India is at $2.08. So we are less than one third of where China is today. So ARPU growth, ARPU improvement is one of the main drivers of growth. What are the other major uh, macro parameters which kind of provide a clear indication of the growth potential? One is that 4G penetration is still at 66% only, and this figure for China again is 116%. So a lot of penetration to happen on the 4G, and if we look at the overall telecom penetration itself, it is only at 83%, and there's a lot of runway left for this penetration of 83% to grow further. And what is important in the Indian context is that wireless broadband still remains the main source of broadband across the country. So we've seen that fiber to home has shown some growth, but essentially the broadband needs of the country are today being met by wireless broadband. So that will be an important factor of the growth of the sector going forward. Now, Okay, so that's the management of Vodafone saying that they are going to invest capital for 5G expansion, talking about the strong pedigree which is there of the promoter groups, both in terms of Vodafone as well as the other Tebrilla group, and saying that they do have the backing of their other stakeholders as well, whether it's the government, but of course we'll have to see what kind of backup they get of that 18 thousand crore FPO as well because of course it's a large sized FPO that they're planning to do on April 18th to April 20th I believe and the price range that was decided was between 10 to 11 rupees um let's see which way that goes but if you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET now